you that are going to uh, not go to the gym and stay in here, that is fine. Um, we will have the blessed palms on the round table, so just pick them up after Mass um, on your way out, okay? All right. I'll be back in a jiffy. Any birthdays in here? Or anniversaries before I go? Any Jayhawk fans? Many faces, the young and Yay!
anniversary? How many years? 30 long years. 30 long years. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations to, our Jay to those Jayhawks. No, birthday? Birthday. Yours? When is it? Wednesday. Wednesday. Happy birthday. We have about three more minutes. Okay, for the past uh, three years, I've been banking time. We've had 30, 45 minute masses, so I've got quite a few hours banked <laughs> that we can use tonight and this week. So just be, get comfortable, people. Wear your comfortable shoes. Actually, I have plans after mass, so it won't be that long. <laughs> Catholic Charities uh, tonight at the Starlight. Uh -huh. Okay, we're going to start. Just a few announcements. Saturday. Easter Masses will be our normal Sunday this time. Of Easter. So let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Grace and peace of God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. My brothers and sisters, today we begin our annual retreat of the Holy Week, the Triduum, the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Passover. History. Jesus entered his own city of Jerusalem to accomplish his ministry. So let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation so that we may share in his resurrection. Almighty living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him forever and ever. Amen. And the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus proceeded on his journey up to Jerusalem as he drew near to Bethpage and Bethany at the place called the Mount of Olives. He sent two of his disciples. He said, go into the village opposite you and as you enter it, you will find a colt tethered on which no one has ever set. Untie it and bring it here. And if anyone should ask you, why are you untying it? You will answer, the master has need of it. So those who had been sent off and found everything just as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owner said to them, why are you untying this colt? 
They answered, the master has need of it. So they brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks over the colt, and helped Jesus to mount. As he rode along, the people were spreading their cloaks on the roads. And now as he was approaching the slope of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to praise God aloud with joy for all the mighty deeds they had seen. They proclaimed, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, teacher, rebuke your disciples. He said in reply, I tell you, if they keep silent, the stones will cry out. The gospel of the Lord. So uh, Palm Sunday and Good Friday, when we hear the passion is, is when I do not preach. So we focus on the actual uh, passion narrative and everything that happens in that passion narrative. I just want to point out here at the beginning, because I'm given the opportunity to preach here at the beginning also. So it's interesting that we note that Jesus sends for a cult that has never been ridden, that has not been trained, but yet the cult allows Jesus to mount it and ride into the city. The cult is much easier to listen to Jesus than it is for the disciples, than it is for us. And so, as you listen to the narrative of the Passion today, focus on what is going on at the Last Supper. Focus on what all the disciples are doing as Jesus is telling them how someone is going to betray him. What is on the disciples' mind? And it's, really, it's good news for all of us because it shows the failures of our own disciples that begin the church. And it's real. That and try to be more like that cult. You know, in previous years, Let us go forth to the church. We'll pray when we get there. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is 
is he, blessed is he, Hosanna, Hosanna, he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna, 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 Hosanna in the highest, 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 blessed is he, blessed is he, Hosanna, Hosanna, he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna, 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 Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, blessed is he, Hosanna, Hosanna. He who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Would you please join in singing our entrance song, number 498, All Glory, Laud, and Honor. Let us pray. Amen. 
almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. in the Lord, let him save him, let him release him, for in him he delights. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? For dogs have surrounded me, a band of wicked besets me, they tear holes in my hands and my feet, I can count every one of my bones. My God, my divide my clothing among them. They cast lots for my robe, but you, O Lord, do not stay far off. My strength, make haste to help me. My God, my I will tell of your name to my can and praise you in the midst of the assembly. You who fear the Lord, give him praise. 
All descendants of Jacob, give him glory. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God, something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even on the cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend for those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Christ became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at the table with the apostles. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer, for I tell you, I shall not eat it again until there is fulfillment in the kingdom of God. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and said, Take this and share it among yourselves, for I tell you that from this time on I shall not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took the bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which will be given for you. Do this in memory of me. And likewise the cup after they had eaten, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which will be shed for you. And yet, behold, 
the hand of the one who is to betray me is with me on the table. For the Son of Man indeed goes as it has been determined, but woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. And they began to debate among themselves who among them would do such a deed. Then an argument broke out among them about which of them should be regarded as the greatest. He said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are addressed as benefactors. But among you it shall not be so. Rather, let the greatest among you be as the youngest, and the leader as the servant. For who is greater, the one seated at table or the one who serves? Is it not the one seated at the table? I am among you as the one who serves. It is you who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer a kingdom on you, just as my father has conferred, conferred one on me, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat, but I have prayed that your own faith may not fail. And once you have turned back, you must strengthen your brothers. He said to him, Lord, I am prepared to go to prison and die with you. But he replied, I tell you, Peter, before the cock crows this day, you will deny three times that you know me. He said to them, when I sent you forth, Without a money bag or a sack or sandals, were you in need of anything? No, nothing. They replied, he said to them, But now one who has a money bag should take it, and likewise a sack, and one who does not have a sword should sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you that this scripture must be fulfilled in me, namely, he was counted among the wicked. And indeed, what is written about me is coming to fulfillment. Then they said, Lord, Lord look, look, there are two swords, swords here. here. But he replied, It is enough. Then going out, he went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he arrived at the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not undergo the test. After withdrawing about a stone's throw from them and kneeling, he prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, take this cup away from me. Still not my will, but yours be done. And to strengthen him, an angel from heaven appeared to him. He was in such agony, and he prayed so fervently that his sweat became like drops of blood falling on the ground. When he rose from prayer and returned to his disciples, he found them sleeping from grief. He said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not undergo the test. While he was still speaking, a crowd approached, and in front was one of the twelve, a man named Judas. He went up to Jesus to kiss him. Jesus said to him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? His disciples realized what was about to happen, and they asked, Lord, shall we strike the sword? And one of them struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said in reply, Stop, no more of this. Then he touched the servant's ear and healed him. And Jesus said to the chief priests and temple guards and elders who had come for him, have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs? Day after day I was with you in the temple area, and you did not seize me. But this is your hour, the time for the power of darkness. After arresting him, they led him away and took him in the house of the high priest. Peter was following, following at a distance. They lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat around it. And Peter sat down with them. When a maid saw him seated in the light, she looked intently at him and said, This man too was with him. But he denied it, saying, 
Woman, I do not know him. A short while later, someone else saw him and said, You too are one of them. But Peter answered, My friend, I am not. About an hour later, still another insisted. Assuredly, this man too is with him, for he is also with the Galilean. But Peter said, My friend, I do not know what you are talking about. Just as he was saying this, the cock crowed, and the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. The men who held Jesus in custody were ridiculing and beating him. They blindfolded him and questioned him, saying, Prophesy, who is it that struck you? And they reviled him in saying many other things against him. When day came, the council of elders of the people met, both chief priests and scribes, and they brought him before their Sanhedrin. They said, If you are the Christ, tell us. But he replied to them, If I tell you, you will not believe, and if I question, you will not respond. But from this time on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. They all asked, Are you the Son of God? He replied to them, You say that I am. Then they said, What further do you have to do for testimony? We have heard it from his own mouth. Then the whole assembly of them rose and brought him before Pilate. They brought charges against him, saying, We found this man misleading our people. He opposes the payment of taxes to Caesar and maintains that he is the Christ, a king. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. Pilate then addressed the chief priests and the crowds, I find this man not guilty. But they were adamant and said, He is inciting the people with his teaching throughout all of Judea, from Galilee where he began, even to here. On hearing this, Pilate asked if the man was a Galilean. And upon learning that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was in Jerusalem at that time. Herod was very glad to see Jesus. He had been wanting to see him for a long time, for he had heard about him and had been hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at length, but he gave him no answer. The chief priests and scribes, meanwhile, stood by accusing him harshly. Herod and his soldiers treated him contemptuously and mocked him. And after clothing him in resplendent garb, he sent him back to Pilate. Herod and Pilate became friends that very day, even though they had been enemies formerly. Pilate then summoned the chief priests and rulers and the people and said to them, You brought this man to me and accused him of inciting the people to revolt. I have conducted my investigation in your presence and have not found this man guilty of the charges you have brought against him, nor did Herod, for he sent him back to us. So no capital crime has been committed by him. Therefore, I shall have him flogged and then release him. But altogether they shouted out, Away with this man, release Barabbas to us. Now Barabbas had been imprisoned for a rebellion that had taken place in the city and for murder. Again Pilate addressed them, still wishing to release Jesus, but they continued their shouting. Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate addressed them a third time. What evil has this man done? I found him guilty of no capital crime. Therefore, I shall have him flogged and then release him. With loud shouts, however, they persisted in calling for his crucifixion, and their voices prevailed. The verdict of Pilate was that their demand should be granted. So he released the man who had been in prison for rebellion and murder, 
for whom they asked, and he handed Jesus over to them to, to deal with as they wished. As they led him away, they took hold of a certain Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, and after laying a cross on him, they made him carry it behind Jesus. A large crowd of people followed Jesus, including many women who mourned and lamented him. Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep instead for yourselves and for your children, for indeed the days are coming when people will say, Blessed are the barren, the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. At that time, people will say to the mountains, Fall upon us, and to the hills, cover us. For if these things are done when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Now two others, both criminals, were led away with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him and the criminals there, one on his right, the other on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. They divided his garments by casting lots. The people stood by and watched. The rulers, meanwhile, stared at him and said, He saved others. others. Let, Let him save himself, himself if he is the chosen, chosen one, the Christ of God. Even the soldiers jeered at him. As they approached to offer him wine, they called out, If you are king of the Jews, save yourself. Above him, there was an inscription that read, This is the king of the Jews. Now one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuking him, said in reply, Have you no fear of God? For you are subject to the same condemnation. And indeed, we have been condemned justly for the sentence we received corresponds to our crimes. But this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied to him, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon because of an eclipse of the sun. Then the veil of the temple was torn down the middle. Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion who witnessed what had happened glorified God and said, This man was innocent beyond doubt. When all the people who had gathered for this spectacle, spectacle saw what had happened, they returned home beating their breast. But all his acquaintances stood at a distance, including the women who had followed him from Galilee and saw these events. Now there was a virtuous and righteous man named Joseph, who, though he was a member of the council, had not consented to their plan of action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea and was awaiting the kingdom of God. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. After he had taken the body down, he wrapped it in a linen cloth and laid him in a rock-hewn tomb in which no one had yet been buried. It was the day of preparation, and the Sabbath was about to begin. The women who had come from Galilee with him followed behind. And when they had seen the tomb and the way in which his body was laid in it, they returned and prepared spices and perfumed oils. Then they rested on the Sabbath according to the commandment. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise Jesus. Jesus.
Together, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come, amen. Our God who took on human form intimately knows our needs. With trust in his loving humility, we raise our prayers and our petitions. For the church, that this commemoration of Holy Week bring renewed vigor to the work of spreading the gospel of Jesus, the name above all names. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to Russia's war on Ukraine, that violence may give way to justice and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the elect, preparing for the waters of baptism. For those who will join the church at Easter. And for all those who renew their faith during this holy season. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to executions and the use of the death penalty as a means of punishment, that all life be valued and respected, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all gathered here, for the humility to cry out to Jesus to save us, and for the conviction needed to follow Jesus, even when the crowds are not cheering. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For those who by their sufferings share in the passion of Christ, especially Christina Marie Gonzalez, may they fully share his exaltation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
loving God, you always hear our prayers. Journey with us this week as we commemorate the events of your life, death, and resurrection so that we might more fully enter into your Paschal mystery. And we ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As the altar is prepared, please join in singing number 515 in the cross of Christ, number 515. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by your own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Yeah. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was in it, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, James, our Bishop, the clergy, and all your children. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At our Savior's command and for my divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to each other a sign of Christ's peace. Peace at home, everybody. Peace. Take all.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word of my soul. The communion song can be found in your hymnal at number 950. Take and eat. Number nine, five, zero.
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We go in peace to love and serve our Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us go forth singing number 512, O Sacred Head Surrounded. Number five, one, two. Oh, see. 